I am going to discuss the veins of the upper body and lower body and how it all kind of fuses together into the superior and inferior mesenteric veins. So when we look at the anterior, right, when we look at the upper body, let me phrase that, you'll see that there are actually two sets of veins, one superficial and one much deeper. All right, the very first one we'll notice on the forearm region, number 32, this is your median antibrachial vein. The median antibrachial vein then divides into number 33 and number 34. This Y turn right here in some people is a little bit different, right? Um, this number 33 is sometimes referred to as the median cubital vein. In reality, on these models, we don't see a true median cubital vein. Instead, you'll see a median basilic and a median cephalic vein, right? The median basilic goes up here and turns into the and drains into the basilic vein, number 31. The median cephalic goes up here and is going to drain into number 30, the very long cephalic vein right here. The cephalic vein actually starts way down here. The basilic vein actually starts way down here. All right, so you have the median antibrachial split is going to turn into the median, so, uh, median basilic, median cephalic, which then leads into the cephalic and the basilic, right? Now, what else do we see is that deeper to that, you see two veins that are deep that run through the arteries on the opposite side. Remember, anatomical position. So number 28 is your radial vein. 29, ulnar vein. They fuse together. As they merge, they form the brachial vein. Number 27, all right? As the brachial vein moves up, it receives the basilic vein. In the process, it forms number 24. This is an axillary vein. The axillary vein moves up, and then it receives your cephalic vein, 30. In the process, it forms the subclavian vein over here. And subclavian vein is number 23. The subclavian vein moves up, 